Well, hello, traders and investors. Today is July 10th. My name is Roger Scott. I'm the head trader for WealthPress. And today I'm going to give you a nice broad view of what happened this week and what we can expect next week. And I'll also give you some key levels for the indices and explain to you how fragmented weeks should be completely ignored by looking at what happened last week versus this week. So let's get into it right now. World economy mixed on Friday. Investors waited a rise in COVID-19 cases in the U.S. against upbeat economics in Europe. It's very strange what we're seeing right now. Wall Street futures were down slightly. Asian markets closed lower. European shares, however, edged up after official figures showed industrial production bounced back. Manufacturing, get this, jumped 22% in France, making up for the previous month's fall. Italy's industrial production spiked 42%. Now we're just waiting for U.S. production to get going. Now, U.S. government showed 1.3 million workers filed for unemployment last week. That's down from 1.4 million, and that's the average. The four-week moving average is between 1.4 and 1.5 million. As long as we can stay below 1.4, we're moving in the right direction. The improvements helped validate investors' optimism that the economy can recover as antivirus controls are relaxed. That helped the S&P 500 rebound to within 7% of its record after being down nearly 34%, which is amazing. Economists point to troubling slowdown, and I, folks, as I'm telling you, it's going to take some time to get back out of this. Investors are worried that worsening infection levels in populous U.S. states Florida, Texas, and California. Gee, aren't those the three biggest states in the country? Could derail a recovery. Some states are rolling back their reopenings, like Florida, for example, while others are ordering people arriving from hot spots to quarantine. Other countries, including Brazil, South Africa, also reported rising cases. Again, crude oil, $39 a barrel. If it stays between 39 and 41, we are not going to be bleeding. The larger companies are not going to be bleeding. But right now, it looks like oil is on its way down again. This was an interesting week, to say the least. And I want to show you something interesting. Notice we've got gold edging higher. Gold is making a multi-year high. That's one year. That's two years. That's three years. That's five years. Do you see data here that's higher? That's a five-year high. Ten years, no. We've got... We had higher prices back in 2012, 2013, but as you could see, we're edging. The next support level, resistance level, excuse me, for gold is going to be at the 175. I'm looking at the GLD ETF, which most of you look at. I'm not looking at spot. So the next resistance level is going to be right around the 174 and a half, 175 level. And then if we can break 185, oy, 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 look at this. We're going to be at the highest level since 2011 that's going to be the highest price in 10 years now typically gold goes up when u.s stocks are not looking that great when economy is a little soft to say the least but i want to show you something interesting this is the s p 500 this is the rally that happened last week when we had the fourth of july holiday and i explained to everybody and there's a lesson here and I explained to everybody that we're having a fragmented week. And a fragmented week means there's not a lot of institutional traders uh, driving the market higher right now. They're mostly sitting on the sideline. And what's telling, and that's usually telling us that whatever happened during that period gets reversed. So institution investors, institutional investors came right here. This is the week following. This is this week. This is last week. And this is this week. And as you could see, momentum levels are dying out and now markets are looking softer. And we also heard news yesterday that um, the Supreme Court ruled against President Trump. They're going to get access to his income tax. And I don't think that's very beneficial to the stock market. The S&P is already down 0.66% this morning, and it looks like we're heading back to the 200-day moving average. If you look at the QQQ, the NASDAQ 100, which has been leading this overall market, it's still leading, it's still making higher highs, but again, there's divergence. I know, I know, you're, you keep, I keep saying this divergence, and you keep saying, Roger, what is this fancy schmancy word? Look at this. Let me show you this here. Let me extend this. This is exactly what happened before the crash. As a matter of fact, look at this. 
higher highs, right? We got, oh, geez, Louise. I can't draw to save my life. Here, let me see if I can move this over here. <laughs> I'm no Picasso, let me tell you that right now. <laughs> let me just draw another one, just to save everybody, including myself, embarrassment and time. Jeez, Louise, this is getting harder by the, the minute. Here, I'll, I'm, I'm going to do it. It's going to happen. Why can't it? It doesn't want to cooperate with me. Let's see, maybe I could move this thing. All right, here we go. Oh, I see. It's a separate It's a separate pane. Well, you could see here, lower highs. Higher highs, lower highs. Higher highs, lower highs. Notice price action going higher, <laughs> crashes. That's divergence. And we're seeing the same thing right here. Higher highs, momentum levels cannot sustain themselves. That's very, very big. Plus, I want to show you something else. And this is something you've got to be very mindful of. Most people haven't have stopped looking at this. This is the volatility index. This is the VIX. All right. VIX is still at 30. All right. That means volatility is three times higher than average right now. Look where VIX was before this crash right? 12, 13. We're at 30 right now. We went from 13 to 30. All right. That means premium option premium. It means investors, traders who are looking at options are very fearful still. No, they're not as fearful as we were four months ago, but nonetheless, fear levels are heightened. And if fear levels are heightened, that means markets are not complacent. Lastly, let me show you the bond market. Bonds are moving higher again, all right? Typically, bonds move higher, bonds break out when stocks are set to go lower. And again, bonds are moving higher. So we've got gold and we've got bonds moving higher. Those are two defensive assets. So be very, very careful. And again, I'm going to show you this again. I want to show you the momentum levels and I'm going to show you why I'm very, very nervous about this market. Look at the number of stocks trading above the 50-day moving average on the NASDAQ 100. This is insane. Look at that. And we're just coming down. We're just coming down. Now, price is still moving slightly higher, but momentum levels are moving lower. That's called narrowing of momentum. That means there's less stocks driving this strength, driving this market further, driving this market higher. Because as you can see here, on the S&P, on the QQQ, look at that. We're going higher, right? We're going higher. But momentum levels are going lower, okay? That means there's less and less stocks driving the NASDAQ 100 higher. So imagine you have a car, and it's an eight-cylinder car, and it's going 100 miles per hour. And somebody goes inside the hood and breaks four of those eight cylinders and now the car is driving on four cylinders at 100 miles per hour that engine's going to be working a lot harder right that's what you're seeing on the nasdaq 100 you're seeing narrowing of momentum price look at this moving higher right price moving higher let me clean it up for you right here price moving higher but momentum levels lower. That's called narrowing of momentum. Now we're seeing narrowing of momentum. We're seeing momentum levels going from overbought lower. We're seeing gold at a multi-year high and we're seeing the bond market rally. Folks, all of these things are pointing to a softer stock market in the weeks ahead. Not long term, but in the weeks ahead. So I want you to be very cautious and reduce your exposure. If you have 100 shares, trade with 50 shares. If you have 1,000 shares, trade with 300 shares. Lower your exposure. Volatility is about to get higher again. And folks, don't let yourself get stranded on the sidelines. This is not the time. Even though the market's looking a little cooler, a little softer, there are opportunities out there. Get in the game each morning with my 7 a.m. super surges. Overnight activity, like what we were looking at just now, often dictates how the market will react the following day. I would say about 90% of the time. 
leaving small investors baffled on the sidelines and wondering what hit them. Because you guys aren't following the overnight markets. You're looking at the day session S&P market, and then you turn it off when it closes, and you go again on the S&P the next day. But the world doesn't stop. The markets don't stop. They keep moving and wondering, moving and moving and moving. And small investors are wondering what hit them the next day because you're missing out on a big piece of this puzzle. So this revolutionary system analyzes pre-market activity with the potential to spot massive jumps in stocks. And get this, 93.2% accuracy. Heck, last two weeks, we've had 100% accuracy. I'm not kidding, 10 out of 10 trades. But overall, 93.2% accuracy. That means you could cash in huge returns, low risk trades. Are you ready to learn more? I hope so. Get an unfair advantage in this market. This is a very fragmented, very volatile market. It's tricky right now. D7 AM super surges is your ticket. Learn more. Click on the link below to get this info now. Click the link to see how you can get these trades today. And again, stop sitting on the on the sidelines. We've had a 100% success rate in the last few weeks and overall 93.2% accuracy. How can you afford to miss it? You can't. Get in on this now. And most importantly, have a wonderful weekend. I'll talk to you guys next week. Bye.